I've talked about Symbiogenia many times on this channel. We know that these tiny little single-celled dinoflagellates provide a lot of the energy that the corals need, and those corals house them in their tissues. We know that the coral can expel the dinoflagellates when they're stressed. It's called coral bleaching. We've also talked about how coral is able to take in the dinoflagellates from the water, and that's how baby, newborn, freshly settled coral gets their first set of these critical symbiotic organisms. But if corals are just picking up cells from the water, how do they ensure that they're getting only good cells? How do they prevent disease-causing cells from coming in, cells that could make them sick? Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this week we'll be talking about a paper that was just published in June of 2020 of Nature, and it's got the title, Lineage Dynamics of the Endosymbiotic Cell Type in the Soft Coral Xenia. The paper is open access, and as always, there's a link down below, so check it out. You can get a lot more information if you want the full details, authors, all that kind of stuff on the research. First off, maybe that title is a little bit confusing. I thought it was. So let's break it down a little bit. What is or what are lineage dynamics? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure. I tried to find a good definition, couldn't really find one. Cellular dynamics is a study of just how the cells work and how it changes in response to stimuli. A cell lineage is just a cell over time or maybe a group of cells kept over time. So I'm pretty sure that lineage dynamics is just looking at the structures and the things going on in cells over time. And if you've got a better way to explain that, maybe you're a biologist, drop us a comment below. I'd be happy to uh, get a better definition. I'm not a biologist by training, although I do play one on YouTube. And then the second thing that might be confusing, endosymbiosis. What is that? That one I did know. Most coral gets a lot of food from those dinoflagellates that I was talking about. They're tiny little things that can live on their own, but they can also live in the tissue of the coral. That's endosymbiosis. Whenever two organisms live together where one is inside the other, they're endosymbionts. So this paper is looking at the cells in Xenia coral, which contain dinoflagellates, and then looking at how they actually make that work on a cellular level. This is something that science has been trying to figure out for a while, and so it's really cool to see a paper actually explaining it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more papers on this because this one really just introduces the core concepts and sort of proves it out. But it, that raises a lot more questions that really can only be answered now that we have this work as a foundation to build off of. Corals collect symbiodinium algae through feeding, and then they end up in the cells that line the digestive tract. Those are called the gastrodermis. The gastrodermis is a the tissue there. It turns out that those cells can identify specific cells that are going to be good for the coral, and they also contain genes that let them modulate the immune response that you'd expect to see when a foreign cell enters you know, one of your body cells. That's how you fight off an infection. The research team did a lot of RNA sequencing to find the answers that are in their paper. In fact, they found that Xenia has about 29,015 genes. That's a similar number as other cnidarians, other corals and jellyfish, things like that. For comparison, you and I, well, we have somewhere between 20 and 25,000 genes. So Xenia actually has more than us. These genes are used to produce all sorts of proteins and things that we and corals need for our day-to-day -day lives. Using the genes found inside cells, the team sorted the cells of the Xenia into 16 different groups. Not all cells have all genes. For example, your brain tissue can't make digestive fluid like your stomach lining can. So by segregating them out into groups, they could more easily look at related cells based on the genes. To find cells that were involved in the dinoflagellates to begin with, the team used the simple fact that dinoflagellates fluoresce. They could use this to sort the cells into different groups where some of them contained dinoflagellates and some of them didn't. Between 2 and 6% of cells in a given Xenia are going to contain dinoflagellates, and cells found in the tentacles actually have the most. Cells that did contain dinoflagellates had genes that were able to recognize the other cells and aid in phagocytosis, which is when one cell engulfs another. And your white blood cells actually do that as well. And they also had genes that could control the coral's immune response. So these cells can identify the proper dinoflagellate algaes to grab out of the water. They can grab them from the water in the digestive tract of the coral. And then they can make sure that the coral's immune system doesn't kill the algae, which of course would make the whole thing useless in the first place. 
It's important to understand also, these cells and the dinoflagellates are almost the same size. So, if you have the cell and the dinoflagellate, when the cell surrounds and brings the dinoflagellate inside, it's got to almost double in size. That's no simple feat for a cell to do, and that's why they have genes that make it possible. The team also identified five individual stages that these cells seem to go through, starting with a cell without any symbionts in it called pre-endosymbiotic, all the way through mature cells that contain dinoflagellates, that's stage three, and up to stage five, where the cells have lost their symbionts. And that's the lineage dynamic that the title is referring to. This is really the first paper and the first research that I'm aware of that actually identifies these cells and looks at how it all works, sets up that lineage dynamic, looks at the genes in them that make it all work. This is really amazing research, and I'm really, uh, really just really glad that it is published and open access in nature so that we can all read it and learn from it. A lot of times this stuff is kept sort of under lock and key in uh, academic libraries. And understanding how this works is going to unlock so many more avenues for research. Now that we know something about the cells and how they work, maybe we can find a way to use the cells to help combat coral reef bleaching because those same cells are involved in that when they expel their dinoflagellates. I hope you enjoyed the video. The paper is linked down below. Check it out if you're interested. There's a lot more detail that I didn't go into. Don't forget to subscribe. Be kind to each other. Have a fantastic day. Bye.